The early Cretaceous is characterized by a relatively warm climate, and areas like England, which is temperate today, would have experienced semi-arid conditions at the time. The landscape was therefore covered in ginkgos, cycads, and other vegetation types that existed in savanna ecosystems. These plants supported many species of herbivore, for instance Iguanodon and the huge Pelorosaurus. Terrestrial theropods like Neovenator were the apex predators in this region, but soaring above these dinosaurs were numerous species of pterosaur. One type in particular had a unique interest in what was happening below. Istiodactylus was a large pterosaur with a wingspan of up to 5 meters. Its jaws made up less than 80% of its total skull length, notably shorter than most pterosaurs in its group. The blunt end of its beak was equipped with sharp interlocking teeth, which were even in size. Aside from this bizarre skull, Istiodactylus had a skeleton that was reminiscent of other ornithochiroid pterosaurs, with long wing fingers to support their huge wingspan and comparatively tiny hind limbs. The distinct jaws of Istiodactylus have prompted discussion among paleontologists about how this pterosaur may have fed. Early theories compared Istiodactylus's beak to that of herons and skimmers, pointing towards a fish-based diet. The pterosaur could have dipped its beak below the water's surface while in flight, grabbing at fish with its pointed teeth. Others have proposed that Istiodactylus relied on filter feeding due to the broad shape of its beak. This behavior is comparable to how dabbling ducks feed today. However, this hypothesis seems to have been based on an incorrect reconstruction of Istiodactylus' skull. Combined with the presence of teeth which are not suited to filter feeding, this theory is now largely dismissed. In more recent years, a third possible feeding method has been proposed. Noting that Istiodactylus lacked the recurved teeth present in fish-eating pterosaurs like Ramphorhynchus, some scientists have pointed out that its teeth were better suited for shearing flesh than catching fish. The frequency of Istiodactylus fossils in continental beds implies that this pterosaur spent much of its time away from the ocean. Instead, it may have soared above the dinosaur-filled savanna in search of carcasses to scavenge. The most compelling evidence in support of this scavenging lifestyle can be found by once again looking at Istiodactylus's unusual skull. Its jaw muscles appear to have been quite large, meaning Istiodactylus had a strong bite. However, it had short tooth rows and slender skull bones. These features indicate that Istiodactylus's skull was ill-suited for subduing prey yet its strong bite would only be necessary if it fed on large animals. This combination of strong and weak elements of the skull is also seen in modern scavenging birds, suggesting that Istiodactylus filled a similar niche to that of the marabou stork of Africa. This impressive scavenger did not persist past the early Cretaceous but pterosaurs would continue to fill the skies until the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction 66 million years ago.